Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Karen here and I have a new video today. This is the video for the mixed media for beginners and today we're going to talk about mediums, specifically gel mediums. And I think there's a lot of confusion out there about what gel medium is or what um, mediums are because many companies call it different things. So it's really hard to understand what that all means. So I'm going to get started and the first thing I'm going to clarify is what is gel medium. And to do that I want to first talk about what is medium. Medium is a type of art supply. Basically it could be anything, any type of medium. So funny thing, medium and media are the same word. Media is the plural of medium, for those of you who don't know, because I actually didn't know that. I mean, yeah, it makes sense when I sing, because I use mixed media a lot in a sentence, but I didn't realize that medium and media are actually the same thing. So, I mean, maybe it's a dumb moment for me, but, oh, I even found out something myself that I didn't realize I was going to learn. So, what I want to say about this is that we're going to talk specifically about gel medium. Now, gesso is a medium. Paper is a medium. So, basically, everything that we use for art is a medium. And some companies call something a uh, medium even though technically is a gel. So it's really hard because it gets people very confused and I have questions all the time. What is the difference between, let's say, gel medium and matte medium? And it's actually not a huge difference. It just has to do with how the company called it. And that's just basically um, the main thing about it. There is many, many companies that make gel medium. And first, I want to specifically talk about what is gel medium. So I want to talk about, about what is gel medium. And I understand why the confusion about gel medium, matte medium, it really makes it very difficult for people to understand, especially if they're beginners. I mean, I know what to do and what to use for what. But when somebody, you're beginning and you're seeing all these products and you really don't know what they're for and how to use them, it gets very confusing. Even when I'm trying to explain it right now, and I was really trying to explain what gel medium is, it's really hard to explain because I know what it is, I know what it does, but it's really hard to tell you, okay, this is what gel medium is. And gel medium is basically for me kind of like a glue. So it's not the glue like the white glue that we used in school, but it acts as a Many, has many different uses and instead of maybe defining it let me just explain to you how it works and the differences of gel mediums have to do with the viscosity or the consistency of it and also has to do with the luster and the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about viscosity and how thick the gel mediums are each company uh, has different types of gel mediums and it all depends on what you want to use it for that it basically separates one from another. Many different companies have similar things and just call them different names. And that's why it's so difficult to really understand what, um, what everything is. If you remember, if you've done any type of crafting, you know Mod Podge. Mod Podge is basically like a gel medium. Mod Podge is the actual brand by or the name that they gave the play they gave this and this one is matte but it also comes in other um, lusters but if you really look at all of these here I have Mod Podge this is by play then I have the gel mediums from uh, Prima Marketing which are the ones I use the most then you have Faber Castell you have the Crafters Workshop, you have a Golden, Liquid Text, you have Deco Art, 13 Arts. Really, if you're going out there and you're trying to look for something um, that is gel medium related, there's so many companies, you really get confused and really get very stressed out about it because I can understand there's so many there. Tim Holtz has one um, and a lot of the Ranger artists have that one. So that's really why it gets so, so confusing because every person gives it a different name. And basically, most of them do the exact same thing. It's just a matter of finding the right medium for the right project. 
So the first, like I said, the first thing I want to talk about is the viscosity. And what I mean by that is the consistency and how thick or how thin it is. So something like this is called just matte medium. It's actually kind of like a gel, but it's very fluid. If you see here, it says fluid medium. It's really important to understand that something when it says fluid, it's really, really liquidy. Like if you open it up, it's, um, it's very like liquidy and what is good what this one is good for okay and it's hard to see inside but it literally it's like soup and um very thick soup okay and what is this good for and also sorry another thing i want to say is that if you see here in the back you'll see how fluid it is what it's good for the like liquitex has a guide that can tell you how transparent it is how um glossy it is so whenever it says matte then that means that it's really not glossy at all. But you can have the same medium and it could say glossy medium and that would be something glossy. Now, the viscosity is, this is a very liquidy one. This is great to use when you want to uh, attach very thin papers, when you want to do collaging of thin papers or you want to do gel transfers. This is the best medium for that. You could definitely use these also for gel transfers and to attach thin papers like tissue paper but this one really is the best one I love using it when I have very thin tissue paper like the Tim Holtz tissue paper or even craft tissue paper this is the best one the next thing you have is you have um, the next consistency which is not as um, not as fluid as this one it's kind of in between and I'm going to open up some of them so you can see so Hold on, let me just check this one to make sure. Sometimes they get very stuck together and you have to um, use them. Okay, so, oh, this one is pretty thick. So no, this is not the one I mean. So I'm gonna show you the soft matte gel because some of them, uh, depending on the company, it, um, it shows you how fluid it is. So this is one of my favorite ones to use. I really like this one because it's quite thin and it's soft. It's thick, but it's also, um, if you see, like it's like really easy to use. It's not liquidy, but it's really easy to use. And this one is one of my favorites to use for any type of gluing that is not something really heavy. So for example, paper or like small embellishments. So you could use this as a glue and you could also use it to seal things. So that's a really great thing with the gels that you can use them to seal different things. The and then you have the next one, which is kind of the regular, like, see, every place calls it differently. So the golden ones call it regular gel. And this one, for example, which is the deco art, if you actually open it up, it's pretty solid, but it call, they only call it matte medium, but it's basically the same thing as this regular gel. And it's also the same as thing as this one that I showed you before. And it's also the same thing as this 3D gel. So it's very confusing because people are seeing all these and they're very, they, in terms of consistency, they're all the same. They might have different glossiness and different um, uses, but their consistency are all the same. So these are, so let me just explain what these are good for. So we said that this, the really liquidy one is great for really thin papers and for gel transfers. You can also use the soft gel from Prima to do the gel transfers and also to glue very thin things. When you get to these ones, which is the regular one, and then I also for sure will get into the heavy one, but the one that is like regular, or this one in this case, 3D, it has quite a few different uses, and I'm going to get into the uses in the next section of this video and show you some examples. But I just wanted to show you that the viscosity is kind of in the middle. That's why they call it regular, or I would say, you, they cannot call it medium, medium, because medium would get everything confused, because medium would be also the supply, but also the between small, medium, and large, or how strong, and the, how thick it is, and heavy, and then the medium heaviness. So these are basically the same. 
and the Mod Podge is kind of very, it's kind of liquidy. I would suggest, I would guess that the Mod Podge, and you know what, this one is actually sealed, but the Mod Podge, from what I remember, it's pretty movable. It's kind of, kind of similar to the Soft Matte Gel. The difference between the Mod Podge and these other companies is that this is more designed for crafting. It's, uh, it's called a water-based sealer, so it can also seal glue the same as everything else. I mean, it has the same, this is basically what I call the artist grade, and this is the crafting grade, um, the grade, but if you don't have any, if you don't have, uh, like, financially the way to buy these, and you can buy these for a little bit cheaper, then go ahead and use this. You can start with that and then go get on to the next uh, to the next um, levels, and you can start with these ones and then start buying the other ones as you go along. The last consistency that I want to talk about is this heavy gel, and this is really great. And this is um, really, really thick. And I won't put my finger in it. I'll actually get a palette knife to do this. It's like I don't know how to explain. It's really, really thick. And what's good for this one is that you can use it to uh, glue very thick, heavy pieces. If you use this, it what it does is that it you can uh, glue something very heavy, like for example, something like this embellishment, which is really heavy, or a stone, or something, a piece of wood that is just heavier. And what the nice thing about this is because it's so thick, it will not let it move. And it stays in place until it dries. And I want to, sorry, I forgot to show you how this one looks inside. I want to show you how the how the thicker one. I showed you the this one, but I want to show you how this one, it's pretty thick as well, but just a little bit of a different consistency. Okay? It's a little bit softer. It kind of reminds me of um, some kind of uh, frosting almost to say, while well, this other gel is a little way thicker than this one. Uh, one very important thing to note about all these gels and most of the ones is that they dry transparent. They dry clear. Depending on the luster, you will get um, the matte or the glossy finish, but they all dry clear. The next thing I want to talk about is the luster of the gels. So we have things like matte, like I explained before, soft matte gel, and most of them say matte because I love using matte mediums. But it should really, if it doesn't say matte, then it should say gloss or semi-gloss. So for example, Mod Podge here, this is the matte one, but I've seen Mod Podge, it comes in gloss, semi-gloss, so semi-gloss would be a little bit less uh, glossy than the regular glossiness. I love working with matte colors, I mean with matte lusters, just because what it, what it does is that it basically when you put it on, you can't really see that you have added it to the to the project. While with the glossy one, you're really going to get that glossiness on it. So for example, um, some, sometimes it doesn't say, for example, this heavy body gel is glossy. And the thing that I was trying to figure out is because a lot of people ask me, well, why are some called just gel mediums? And then I was trying to figure out, is a gel medium uh, matte or is a gel medium glossy when they're not put when the company doesn't put what it is because most of them are marked matte or um, or glossy um, matte you see everything is marked but if it's not marked my assumption was that it's glossy and the reason why I think it is it's because they're from the ones that I've seen like this one and this one all the ones that I've actually used that just said gel medium on them or that heavy body gel or anything to do with gel. Gel usually is glossy, so I think they just assume that if it doesn't say matte, then it's glossy. So that's something that to pay attention to, but it's best to always look to see if it says matte or glossy. I really prefer when it does say it because then I know what to buy. I do prefer the matte one. I've used the glossy ones for different type of effects when you want to add something like 
glitter or you want to add something that is shiny then glossiness is the best thing for it so it's really fun to play around with the different ones but if you would have to buy just one I would suggest to buy the matte version of whichever one you like and I will show the examples soon of what I mean by that so for example there's different uses for different gels so besides picking whether you wanted matte or uh, glossy you still need to pick which one is the one that you might use the most meaning what type of art do you do so if you do things like art journaling you might want something like the matte medium here the liquitex one or the soft matte gel but if you do things like canvas and you're adding a lot of heavy elements onto it so you might want something a little bit on the heavier side if you do everything then you might need to buy yourself a little bit of everything and that's okay as well so I'm going to talk about those in the next section and just try to explain what all of these mean okay now I want to talk about each type of viscosity separately is starting with the most liquid one which is the fluid medium or the matte medium um, this is the one from Liquitex I think other companies do have it as well but this is the one I have and this is very very liquidy not like water liquidy but it is liquid enough that you can actually use it for very light things and a lot of artists use this to collage things on and then paint on top and it has a really nice matte finish so you could use things like uh, tissue paper this is just a really nice tissue paper and I just wanted to show you something that has some kind of image to it so you can see how well it goes on it so um, I do recommend that when you're using any type of gel medium or any type of medium, even if it's gesso itself, dedicate some of your brushes to mixed media and make sure you wash them really well. I've ruined many, many brushes by not taking care of them properly. So it's really important to wash them right away and also to dedicate some just to a mixed media so that way it doesn't uh, ruin the brushes. So I put some gel at the back and then I'm going to now put it at the top and what it does is as it seals the paper really nicely and you can see how liquidy and transparent it is and it's going to um, it's going to dry completely matte so it's really really nice if you then want to add more things to this it will work perfectly you can do this on top of a box this is an art journal page but you can do this on top of a box um, or anything at all you can add, add like this I, I've done altered brushes where I've added this to brushes themselves and because it's so thin and so clear you can't even tell it's on and it dries really really quickly so that's the fluid one and I like it because you can use it for very light things and it gives a beautiful beautiful smooth finish now I'm going to talk about the soft ones and that's basically it's almost like there's four different types the fluid ones then there is the a bit um, softer ones which we called soft gel from Finabare and then there's the regular ones and the really thick ones so I want to show you for example the one that is soft matte gel and this one also comes in a glossy finish um, and I don't have that one right now but you can buy it glossy as well and it will really be shiny so you can see the viscosity of this I mean it doesn't turn I mean unless you really bang it it will not come out so you could use it for the same way to actually put some paper on a box or on any type of um, surface so here I'm putting it here you can do it both ways you can either put it on the paper or on the actual um, background so you could do use it the same this is basically very similar to Mod Podge so it would be the same idea what we used to do decoupage for this is the same idea you can use this instead this is an artist grade this is also pretty good and I have to say that a lot of people use this instead of the gels but I just like buying the artist grade gel and using it for my artwork Another great thing beside being able to stick it onto a paper is you could actually, I mean, tissue paper, you could also um, 
Use it with regular thick paper. If you remember this that I did with the gesso, you could basically tear this apart. And this is a quite a thick paper. It's for scrapbooking paper. And the same thing, you could glue this onto the background and it will stay perfectly still. You can also use this gel to glue anything at all. It's basically, you could use a glue substitute. For example, if you're making cards and you want to glue something onto them, let's say you want to glue an embellishment like this heart, it's made out of wood. Remember, we I did it with the gesso. All you have to do is just add some glue and I ended up, I mean, add some gel and I usually put enough so that will work and then what you do is you actually, I don't, I'm showing it on this paper because I don't want to glue it onto anything else. You put it on and it will stay perfectly still in there. Now with any gel, and this is really important to remember, to gel, to, to fully dry takes about 24 hours. So even if the surface is dry, which makes it easy to work on afterwards, it's really important to wait until everything dries, at least until the next day, except for this fluid medium. This fluid medium dries way quicker just because it's such a thin layer. And the soft gel, if you're adding a very thin layer of soft gel, it will still dry really quickly. But when you're putting a lot and trying to make this stick and stay on an embellish on, on an artwork, it's really important to actually have it stay flat because if you go like this most of the time it starts running down in this case it's not doing that because it's sticking pretty well but sometimes if it's a really heavy thing for example this is woods so it's not as heavy but if it's something heavy like a metal or or a resin it ends up like running so although you could use this gel for for i mean you could use this gel for um for gluing heavy things uh, you have to keep them flat. Another great use for this, and I really love doing this, is the same thing that I talked about with the gesso. You could combine this with, um, with beads, and let me just get those so I'll show you. And you can mix mica in them as well. So for example, I've done something where, I will show you, I take the beads and I stick my brush in my gel and then I stick them onto here and then I just go and brush it with and what it does it actually makes the beads stick to wherever you want them and creates a very very nice texture so that way you can go back and forth and you can see that I have some beads already inside my gel because I end up doing this a lot and if you don't have enough you can go back and seal them and then that great creates an amazing brown texture, blue texture, whatever beads you're putting in there. You can also go ahead and create your own color, oops, um, using some mica, the same way I did the other day. So for example, I'm going to do this on a piece of, hold on. Um, oh, I don't even have acetate, so I guess we're not doing that. Um, okay, so here it is the gel and then you're going to I'm going to make it into a paint so all it does it's the pigment from the mica creates this beautiful paint with the gel and then you can apply and paint it almost like acrylic paint it's really really cool but the nice thing about it is that it dries translucent it's not going to be as opaque as doing it with the gesso like we did the other day so if you watch my gesso what what is gesso and how to use it you will see that it actually um, you can combine this mica with the gel or you can combine it with the gesso and it gives it a more opaque solution uh, for this one, it will dry pretty smooth. And if you want this to be shiny, all you have to do is just buy the gloss gel and that will work perfectly with the mica. Another thing you can combine is glitter. I mean, the possibilities are endless. I really don't want to tell you, I mean, experimenting is basically the key to everything. And you just have to like play around and see what combines with what. So that's really good. There's so many uses for the gels besides sealing things. So one of the main uses, as I said, is protecting, but you can also create your own paint. You can mix them with things and you can also glue the things. So the main, main thing that it is, is for gluing, but there's just so many uses. You don't even, you, you end up like having to experiment with so many different things to just find what you really want to do. So there is the soft gel and the soft gel I find has a lot of 
a lot of different uses so that's really really good if you want to buy one this is technically my favorite and it can do so many different things with it and it lasts you for a long time which is really nice um, the next one I want to talk about is the regular gel some companies call it regular gel which is um, the golden one calls it regular and that one is a little bit of a thicker consistency oops hold on I have to open this up and some of them make sure okay so the hint I said with the with the gesso of putting saran wrap here to con to protect it uh, oh you know what sorry you know what this is a very old gel and it really dried up so I can't I can't um, show you this one, but it's very, very similar to the one, the 3D gel and the matte gel from um, Prima and the Crafters Workshop. So this is um, gel medium and this is the matte and this is the gloss. So I have both of these. And then I also have the 3D matte gel and the gloss gel from Prima. And I want, and oh, sorry, and one more. And then we also have the one from Faber-Castell, which is really thick as well. So I want to show you what these ones do, which is really, really cool. And I think you're going to like this as well. So going back to the same thing, you can use it as a glue because it's really thick. You could um, glue thicker things, like heavier things. So it's much easier. You can see, you can, sorry, sorry about that. I went out of screen. You can glue things that are much heavier and have a much heavier um, consistency to it and it will work perfectly <coughs> excuse me the other thing you can do you can also use this to seal the papers like I did before and you can also combine it with the with the microbeads and with the mica and with the glitter it all does the same thing the one cool thing that does the regular gel or the matte gel or the heavy gel um, the one really good thing that it does is that um, it actually uh, it can be used through a stencil. And I'm going to show you how cool that is. And I guess I need another space here because I'm running out of space. Um, okay, maybe I'll show you here. So this is the stencil that I used the other day. And I'm going to get a palette knife. Oh, here's one. And look how nicely it goes through the stencil. So imagine... You took some of this and because it's so thick, it actually runs through the stencil perfectly without running underneath. So you can create really nice 3D texture and not have the problem of it running below. And what it does, it runs clear. So when you're using it for any type of other medium, when you're adding um, spray or when you're adding um, paint, it will create that texture underneath. And you could imagine if you mix this with the mica, look at the beautiful texture that it creates with the stencil. So the heavy one, I mean the light one of the soft gels won't work as well through the stencils because it's too liquidy. So this is a really good one if you want to use it through a stencil. So the as I said, the other, the, all of them can act as glue. It all depends on what type of element you want to glue or use. So I have this rule where I say light, light uh, medium with light things. So like papers or like beads and, and like, you know, like mica or glitter. And then as it gets heavier, you go heavy with heavy things. So heavy with heavy, light with light. It's a good way to remember things like that way. Now, a lot of people get confused, and I've had this a lot in my classes, where people get confused about which, um, whether or not, what is gel for? And people say, oh, I'll use my paste to glue. And I say, no, 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 paste is not to glue. Gel is to glue. So then I start to thinking, oh, how do I make my, my students remember that? So gel starts with a G and glue starts with a G. But then I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, but gesso also starts with a G. I don't want to confuse people. So remember this, gel, it starts with a G and has an L in it, gel. And then glue has a G and an L in it too. So gel, glue, this is the easiest way to remember. You need the gel to glue things. It has many other different uses, but the gel is the most important thing is to glue things. It can be paper, it can be little ornaments, it could be little embellishments, it could be anything. And then you have 
The other uses that you can do with them, which is like running it through a stencil, mixing it and creating color and so many other things. Make sure, and I'm cleaning the stencil right now, make sure you get remove that gel from anything because it's very sticky and it will not come off. Your fingers, if you want to use um, gloves when you're using gel, go ahead because your fingers will be really sticky. Now, if you like that feeling and you love peeling the glue out of your finger, uh, tips so that's easy but if you don't like doing that then wear gloves the last thing I want to talk about it's about the heavy gel and the heavy body gel this is the Prima one and actually it's glossy even though it doesn't say here um, and other companies have it as well I think Golden and Liquitex have a very heavy gel as well and these are really really cool for one reason when you're doing collage mixed media and you want to glue things and you want them to say stay in the proper place you need the heavy gel so a lot of the media and I'm going to show you what I mean by that I'm going to show you one of my artworks that are hanging over here and I'm going to show you for example you see oops let me go this you see this these are being held by some gel and the nice thing about it is that if you put these flowers which are metal with the heavy gel they will stay in place they will not move which is really really great if you put the other gel they might uh, dry as well and will stay in that proper place but it will take longer for them to actually stay in that place because it takes 24 hours for that gel to dry so this gel also takes 24 hours to dry, but because it's so thick, it doesn't let the elements move around. So you're able to work around them and then actually being able to keep it in the right place. So that's a really good tip for the heavy gel. And I really like you having that one as well, because it's really good for these type of occasions where you need something heavy. I'm guessing you could run this all through, also through a stencil, but I never have done that before. I want to keep, it's a very um, good gel for uh, gluing heavy things, so i rather keep it. I only keep my heavy body gel just to glue things that are heavy. I really also don't like the fact that it's glossy, so I really try to keep it only for gluing things that are heavy and kind of um, making everything stay in place because I prefer working with the matte gel. However, having said that, I have a project here and I will show it to you where I use gloss gel. And if you see here, this is one of the projects that I have on my YouTube channel. And if you see, it's actually shiny. It's really hard to say. Uh, I don't know. Maybe you can't see it. You can't see it in this. And what I did is I actually spread the 3D gel on the background of this elephant stamp and then stamped inside the gel. So there's so many different experiments that you can do with the gels and create so many cool things. And once I stamped with it, I added color by adding some of the mica and some of the color bursts and created color that way. I also, this is a really good video that you can go look later on on my channel. And what it, I'll try to link it below. I'm actually going to link the gesso one as well so you're so you're familiar with what is gesso i also have a video on all the tools that are perfect for mixed media so i'm linking that below as well so it's really good to just have a you know and so you see this this is actually old tissue paper it's actually no not tissue paper it's um paper towels from the kitchen that I used to clean up all the products that I spill on my table. And what I did is I kept them and I using the soft gel, I glued them to the background and created a perfect background. So you can go look at that and see. I want to show you another project and how I used, for example, I used the gel and you can see here that I used gel to glue these little beads all around this is another project that it's on my video and I also use gel to glue the elements to the background so it's a great great way of using things and if you have all the different types of gel you can use them for so many different ideas and so many different um, projects so it's really really good that way uh, one last thing that I want to show you is for example with this one 
you see there's a lot of elements a lot of heavy elements in here so you could use well you could use glue but gel works really well to keep these in place so in in a way like there's so many uses for gel it's really really important to just kind of figure out what gel you want and what you want to use and another thing is that I want to I think I'm going to do a part two of this gel because there is a lot of really cool gels that are in the market that are not the regular ones so besides the matte gel and the glossy gel and the different viscosity of each one there is also um, some really cool gels that I'm going to show you that I've used before and that I want to show you now and I'm going to talk about them in the next video something like glass bead gel and string gel there is uh, another type of glass bead glitter gel from a different company then you have things like clear tar gel so they're very it's very clear and very glossy there is the glaze and there's also something called the coarse pumice gel and i'm going to talk about this and and just oh and one more sorry and the sculpture medium which is a clear gel as well but for something else so there is a few of them that are really really interesting that i want to talk about but i think i don't want to make this video too long and i don't there's so much information here that i don't want you to get all confused so i really wanted to focus on the actual main gels that people use now i'm going to move this around and i want to show you one last thing and that is what kind of tools you need for using gel. So these are very similar to all the mixed media ones that I've already explained, but I want to go over it in case you haven't seen the other videos. So definitely you want to have some palette knives and a paintbrush that can be dedicated just for that. As you can see, mine are not very clean because I use them for everything. You want to have a water bottle beside you and the reason why is because you can take the gel and I forgot to actually show this before you can take the gel and you can dilute it so if you take the gel and you put it here on a mat or on anything and then add a little bit of water it creates a very watery sticky medium and you can use it instead of that matte fluid medium that I was talking about before like this one so you can create your own watery medium transparent medium without having to spend money on the other one so it's a really good thing to do because you can also use this to if for glitter or for any other type of light element and it does have a little bit of uh, blue in this so that from before but that's what I meant so this is a great tip so you need a paintbrush you need as a palette knife in case you want to apply it to something heavy you need a heat tool so really important to have a heat tool and you also need um, some baby wipes to have on hand so that's another thing I always have baby wipes at hand I have my silicone brush which I oh here it is there's two sizes of the silicone brushes and those are really easy to uh, for to apply gel with especially on or to apply gesso or any type of elements. Um, you also, what else do you need? I mean, the usual elements, but these are the most common ones. I really find they're helpful for any type of mixed media. And I do have, as I said, a video that talks about all the amazing tools that you can use, the most common tools that you can use for mixed media. And um, yeah, so that's it. So thank you so much for coming and seeing this video i am um, have the other video linked up at the end about the gestos and about the tools and i'm going to have part two of this coming up in the next little while and i'm going to also do another videos the next ones that are coming up are what is modeling paste what is texture paste and one really really important what is mixed media which i should have started with that one but i will just go ahead and and do one as well because i think a lot of people don't really realize what mixed media is in total so thank you so much for watching if you like this video please please share it on social media help other people because i want to kind of help with all the confusion there is with all these names of the gel mediums because it really helps people understand a little understand it a little bit better and 
just subscribe to my channel if you want just share everything oh i don't know what else to tell you i'm just really glad that you guys came and thank you so much and have an amazing day and go and experiment go have fun and just enjoy yourselves bye